tools we use to build a song. Once we have these notes in our heads, we can sing a million different tunes. How? I need the most anything. You said one word for every note. Yes, Rebecca, I did. But when you sing anything, you're using up three notes on one word. Uh, 2006 was my earliest memory of the sound of music. I didn't, um, I didn't watch the, sh the film until I got offered the job. So I was in the initial cast in, in London, in the West End, and that started in 2006. So I thought I'd better watch the movie to give myself an idea. I, it just never, it had never come across my path. It wasn't something I was, I was, I was into. I mean, I, it's, it's. Yeah, it's weird. I love musicals and I love plays, but I don't tend to watch them necessarily. I I'd also, like to watch I don't, action movies. I don't Arnie. I think there's a misconception that if you're an actor, you sit and you watch every yeah. thing mm. that's about acting. Or, like I, for example, can't watch any any reality TV shows about singing or dancing oh, because I, I started my career in a reality TV show and it kind of you know I can't watch it, but. And people can sing a song. I hate, I hate dressing rooms where people just sing songs from shows. I have no idea what they are. Yeah, so I just I don't think, know. Like I, I, I think that I'm, I'm personally sort of halfway where Nick is maybe more on the side of the scale, so he'll research when he is in something and he mm. just wants to learn about it. Yeah. And other actors are like, oh, I'm going to bombard myself with every single new musical and movie. So I think I'm kind of between Nick and, and the others. Yeah. So I knew the story because I grew up with it and my mom bought me the VHS deep, the video. Come on, you're not that old. <laughs> I didn't have any of that. I had a VHS. Yeah. So I bought, I had that and then I watched that as a child and I loved, my, um, I loved Julie Andrews. So that was my first introduction to musical. Um, I always loved Liesl. When I was, when I was younger, I, think, I thought Liesl was so pretty. And I actually got a signed autograph from Charmaine Carr for my opening night for, for Liesl from my, at the time, my role for the time. He had written to her and she'd signed an autograph for me. How cool is that? Wow. So yeah, that was my sort of experience. Said you, dear Carmen, um, break a leg for tonight. You should check his handwriting. Love that's, a, that's a hell of a gift to get. I'm sure he was, he was in his dressing room himself. Too, I think she has. You're just she jealous. Can you can order them online. You can order them online. I mean, maybe it's not even authentic, but I think she's got Me first. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier for me because I don't think Christopher Plummer is as iconic in the role as, as Jimmy Andrews. Yeah. Um, so it was handy for me to watch the the video or the film to get an idea of it and then put it away and not concentrate on Christopher Plummer because I don't want to give a Christopher Plummer performance um, so but it was a good idea to get a, a flavor of it but then as an actor everybody comes in and brings their own interpretation to it so it's it's very easy for me I just come in and do my job hopefully yeah um, amazing um, and 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 be as truthful as I can to that role how the audience respond to that is out of my control so if they sit there wanting to see Christopher Plummer then there's not a lot I can do about it. Mm. Um, I was I was um, at drama I hated drama school even though I went to a very good drama school I, I didn't enjoy it because I always got the old parts um, and were you gray at like the age of 20? <laughs> I was gray at the age of 20 um, but they said that I was that the sort of actor that would grow into his role because I had an older energy uh, which at the time I didn't really appreciate it was quite upset uh, but I think it's true, as I've got older, I'm now getting the roles that I'm, my, my, uh, whatever I think of. Your energy. Word. Yeah, is right. Yeah. So I do tend to get cast for the same type of roles, the, the upright individual, the classy individual, whatever it is. So it's been like uh, Sound of Music, uh, The Bodyguard, 
another monosyllabic character who just walks around and is just like this. Um, obviously got that and then Raoul, Phantom of the Opera, who's kind of just up like that. So, yeah, what was the question? Well, well, do you get typecast basically? So, so I get typecast in a role. Everyone gets typecast yeah, in, a, in, a, in a in a box. How do you get the opportunity to play something different? So I, when I started out, I played Gabriela Montez in High School Musical, and she is a Spanish girl. And my hair was long and dark, so that was that was the way I was fearing that people would see me forever. And then, lucky, I was cast in Footloose um, by Karen Bruce, and I couldn't wait to like chop my hair off and go back to being a blonde so that I could prove that I was not just that. Um, and then I was kind of typecast for a long time uh, in in this, that kind of ingenue blonde sweet role. And then after that I got into cabaret, which is a dark, which is Cambronev. And then a lot of people will go, oh, you know, she can actually play but characters that are a little bit more macabre darker and then I got back to being typecast as, as the ingenue but that's also you have to as we I think the most important advice I ever got was from a really well-known old actor in, back home and he said that we should know our strengths and weaknesses and stop trying to put ourselves into places in the industry where we don't belong and as much as we should challenge ourselves we should also know realistically as actors where we are suited and where we aren't um, so if that's wow, what I'm wise being, I think so when I'm being typecast is that at the moment that's great, but I, I think typecast, I don't like that word because we are actors, so we should be. But everyone has a everyone has a a look. Yeah, and you yeah. know yourself. Yeah. When definitely. you when you go to a yeah. show. Because really? just because I think that the way it does hamper us as actors is, is if if we we don't get considered for a role because of what we've done in the past and not because of the audition. So if you walk into an audition and you do a good audition for something people didn't expect, yeah. and that's, that's where the magic happens, because they go, oh, she's not just this or it's not just that. Yeah. So, well, it's again, it's, it's just, it's trying to be truthful to the moment. You know, I don't have kids. You know, so I, I can't relate to that, really. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can. But as an actor, you just try and put yourself in that situation. So it's, you know, if I was someone who'd lost his wife and was with his kids and had kind of lost contact with them, which is what the show starts and it's kind of yeah. a little bit distant, I can relate to that, yeah. you know, so I'll, I'll kind of understand his path. I've never been in that path, but I can relate to it. And then when Maria comes in and kind of opens the door and, and then he falls in love again, I can relate to that and so I can be truthful to that even though I've not experienced it. I can, you know, so that, as an actor that's what you're doing. So um, throughout the whole show you're just trying to be truthful to that moment. And so it doesn't matter what other characters or other actors have done. It's, it's my interpretation at that point that hopefully the audience is then, you know, believes. And I always, I'm sorry, I always think that I feel that as as Nick said, being truthful to the moment is about actually feeling it from inside of yourself and then coming out and, and being something that shows on the outside. I, I always feel like actors who work from the outside in, you can see the difference so quickly. So if you think, oh, I should be portraying that I'm sad and I don't really feel sad, I don't find in my own truth, in my own life, in my own experience, where I actually find that emotion, then you can see the difference. Yeah. Um, when it comes from the outside, from the inside out, then that's when you can see the, the, the I think that's the, the mark of a truthful interpretation of a character. You can't fake it though. A lot of actors do and they're really good at they're it. Very good tech, uh, technicians. Oh, that is a different skill. I Don't change a thing. No, it's that is that is very much up to obviously what we've rehearsed with our directors in rehearsals, and they then look after the show. So we, because we don't, we kind of, if I can explain it, have a bit of like our tracks, and we can't see the whole show from our front because we're on stage. So the directors are there to make sure that that story is authentic in every country. We don't change anything. If there's a country that needs translation, we have subtitles. Okay. Um, obviously, the kids are very authentic to every country. That's a very important part of 
um, that does change, but the tracks don't change, the calibre of ch child we cast doesn't change. Um, but that's important though, so every, yeah. every country you go to is getting the same show. Exactly. And that's it's what that they want standard. to see, they want to see that. Um, yeah, I've been doing it since 2006. Okay. On and off, not, not every day. I'm, I'm... <laughs> um, but uh, there's always special moments in every production, but it's usually individual performances rather than... Um, yeah. Because the show is generally the same, and it, yeah. even from London to touring to here, because I've done three different inc incarnations of it, it's the same. Everybody, you know, the same production is, is, is great, so you guys are getting a, a fab show. But then there are moments where, you know, there'll be a, a, a connection that you've not got before, or someone will say something in an intonation, and you, you can go, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Because as an actor, you, you are doing the same thing every day, and people always say, how do you do it? Well, one is, it's not the same, because you're trying to re you're trying to create something new. So you're trying, so it's, even though you're recreating, you're not trying to create but then as an actor you also try and have fun with it as well so there are nice moments where you can make someone laugh where they should even see when someone you know it might not be something that laughs out loud but like if, if someone does you know yeah it's fun to have a so there's like two layers there's a connection you know character and also a connection as a Um, well, that, I mean, that's one of the best parts of the show for me, uh, you know, uh, is, is because it's, um, you know, we have such great kids coming in and performing, and that's probably the first time that I kind of have much of an interaction with them, because otherwise it's, it's the beginning of that one where I just blow whistles and uh, don't really connect with them. So it's nice to, 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 to hear them sing as a, as a unit, and as an actor, then, it, you're, again, you're it's able, it's, it's possible for me to, to relate to that where I've seen my children for the first time again. You know, he's a man who used to sing around the house with his wife. They used to play the you play, you know, the guitar and all of that. Now, he, now he's taken music out of his life. What a miserable bastard. And Nicholas really does such justice to that moment on stage. And it's, and I'm not saying that because I like him, I'm saying that because it really is just such a beautiful moment. And it's yeah. so really gorgeous. And we have a moment as well, because, you know, before the, you kind of ask her, whatever that is, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to take the flower in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of acknowledge the fact that, yeah. that it's, it's come from Maria, that she's kind of... just does of, a little hit. Yeah, and that she's made it. And I can't look at... You emotion. make it so beautiful. Like, it really is, it reads so beautifully. I just face up stairs, you can't see everything. And it's human connect <laughs> it's human connection. Yeah. So it's natural to all of us, you know. Um, well, you'll have to see it, that's the moment. Yeah. We can't, you know. I know. I'm if it worked, we can't yeah. fake it. So yeah. we have to be truthful to the moment, so hopefully you'll get the same. The message is the same. I mean, I think like any art, it's up to be interpreted by the viewer. But it's quite, um, it's a message about family, about love, about strife, about overcoming difficulty, about music, about connection with other people, about love. It's not, it's, I know, it's, yeah, you're right, but it's not really for me to say what the message is. So I'm saying it's like for it's, the, for the I've, I've, my, my, my job is to, to give truth to the character and then if you can take away from that a message I, I have no idea what their intention was when they wrote it if they wanted to give you a message but it's got all the old themes of love you know uh, and oppression and uh, you know getting away from tyranny Literally. hi everybody please come to the Nellum Pocana theatre well done <laughs> from the 14th to the 18th of February to see our wonderful production of The Sound of Music here with local children performers as well. It's going to be fantastic. We look forward to seeing you there. We're only here until Sunday, so... Alright! Bye!